Deputy Governor of the Bank of England uh, to address us this morning. Um, understanding the monetary and fiscal programme is a critical part of the National Institute's work. Um, it's a core part of our research agenda and something to which we contribute in the public arena regularly. It's been the cause of much work in the past couple of years in the presence of the supply shocks that we've faced in the UK, whether it's the slower puncture of Brexit, the existential threat caused by the pandemic, or the horrific events that we've seen in Ukraine and Russia. Each of these have presented the economy with a supply shock that the monetary and fiscal programme has at times wrestled problematically to deal with. Perhaps best are highlighted by the events of last autumn. But in light of that work, it's been very important for us to generate more interest in these critical questions. And the Institute itself has hosted and played a part in a number of events in the past year. At the end of last March, we organized an anniversary event celebrating the 25th anniversary of the establishment of the Monetary Policy Committee. That was done with our friends at Gresham College and the Money Macro Finance Group. And I'm glad to say Ben was able to address us on that day as well. One of the current Monetary Policy Committee members, Silvana Tenreiro, gave the Dow Lecture. Uh, Christopher Dow was a, a well-established member of NISA staff, but also uh, was well-recognized at the Bank of England, the way he served as director as well, uh, on the economy and policy trade-offs as we face the supply shocks that we're now currently wrestling with. Our Anglo-German lecture last autumn was given by our good friend Volker Wieland out of Frankfurt, who was looking at the ECB and addressed the question of the energy crisis, inflation and recession, what economic policies are needed. And just a couple of months ago, uh, Philip Lane, who's contributed to the review a number of times over the years as the chief economist at the ECB, came to talk to us about the euro area hiking cycle and interim assessment. In all of this, we're not only contributing to the research about this debate, but trying to assess as far as possible an approach to an optimal monetary policy. These things are not by any means easy. In real time, to understand what we have to do is a question that occupies some of our finest minds. On which note, let me turn to a, a, another welcome to Ben. Dr. Broadbent is Deputy Governor of the Bank of England. Um, he's been a member indeed of the Monetary Policy Committee um, for three years before he became Deputy Governor. He's been a member of the Monetary Policy Committee since June 2011. Indeed, I noted this morning, noticed this morning, he's been on 118 consecutive meetings of the MPC, which still means he has to do 20 more before he can beat our president, Paul Tucker, who's done 137 uh, meetings over time. But I've got a feeling he may well meet that target. Prior to joining the Bank of England, uh, Ben was a European economist at uh, Goldman Sachs and had also spent time as economic advisor at HM Treasury. Um, he uh, was an undergraduate at Oxford and completed his PhD at, um, at Harvard, where he was a Fulbright scholar. Uh, ben will talk to us today about prices and quantities. And I look very forward very much to what he has to say. He's kindly indicated he'd be happy to take questions while he speaks, uh, and, but we'll also be allowing plenty of time for questions afterwards. So I'll leave it to you as to when you want to come in. Ben. Thanks very much, Jag. Um, thank you very much, and um, thanks so much for having me at extremely short notice. Um, very happy to be here and to see so many familiar places. The talk that I've actually written is ridiculously long, so <laughs> I am not going to read it out. Um, I'm just going to try and sort of ad lib through these slides. I'll probably miss things out. Um, but there you go, maybe they'll crop up in the Q&A. So this is a, an extremely old question, the first one here. Uh, should we understand how monetary policy works through the lens of monetary aggregates? Or is it more about what they do to asset prices, bond deals, interest rates, things like that? And there's a particular one that follows now that's quite relevant. Um, with this extraordinarily high inflation we've had, is that the result in particular of what was very strong growth in broad money during the pandemic, um, some of which has since been reversed? 
Um, and finally, a more sort of niche question, um, but one that's also crops up from time to time. And we've been asked, uh, how does the MPC take account of the ongoing QT, the shrinkage of the asset purchase facility, which is the vehicle through which it conducted QE? How does it take account of that in its forecasts? So, um, as I say, I'm going to kind of race through these. Most of what I've written is about the 